So in this episode, we're gonna sand everything down, then we're going to glue the carcass together, and then we'll install the hanging rails and the spanner for the countertop. Let's get started. So we just did the dry fit of the cabinet carcass, uh, knocked that back down. Now we need to get to sanding. Um, we're not gonna have to do a lot of sanding on this. This plywood came pre-sanded uh, to about 120 grit. So all I'm basically doing is just knocking down the pencil marks, getting those off of there. Um, to do this, one thing you notice, I don't have the standard quick clamps that I had out earlier. I'm gonna have, use these clamping elements. Clamping elements go in the dog holes of the MFT, and then we have the clamp part of it over here that locks into place. Now I can sand the entire piece of plywood with no clamp getting in the way. So the sander I picked is the ETS EC125-3. A lot of numbers there. 125 stands for the diameter of the pad. It's about five inches. Now the three, what that stands for is the size of the orbit of the random orbital motion. Um, so it's a three millimeter orbit. The reason we chose a three versus a five is the three is less aggressive. And with sanding on veneer plywood, the veneers are getting thinner and thinner each day. So I don't want to sand through that veneer. Just want to sand pencil marks off, knock down any high spots. Um, and then at the end, I can uh, put a finish on it. So the grit I'm using is a granite abrasive and it's a 120 grit. So let's go ahead and do some sanding. I want to talk a little bit about how to sand. A lot of people think, oh, you just sand until the, the marks are gone or the, the high spots down. I always like to keep the sander moving. Um, if you notice right here, I still got a little bit of this pencil mark left. I don't want to just keep my sander here and just move it back and forth in that one area because what's going to happen is I have a chance of sanding through that veneer or creating a dip if it's a solid piece of wood. Always move. If you only have one spot you have to get down, sand the entire piece so it stays completely even and flat. You don't have a chance of sanding through the veneer or creating a dip if it's solid wood. Down to the last panel for this carcass. Okay, so we've got the carcass all sanded down. Now we can start working on the face frame. Um, I had this in clamps overnight just pulled it out so we need to come back and sand off all the pencil marks and get rid of some of the glue that i didn't get off when i wiped it down i always try and wipe down all my glue ups after i put them in clamps so there's a little bit left over i've switched over i'm going to switch over to 80 grit on the sander from 120 because we're going to sand a little bit more coarse so i can get this in clamps and we'll start standing Got the front pretty much where I want it um, with the 80 grit. So what I'm gonna do really quick is just flip it over. Just get the back side, just try and get some of that glue off there. Um, nobody's ever gonna see this, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I like to sand and make sure it's all flat. So now I've got both sides sanded to 80. I'm gonna flip it back over to my face side, clamp that back down, and I'm gonna take this up to probably 150. So we'll put 120, because we're gonna jump up to 150, and that should be the end of the sanding. I 
Okay, now that we've got everything sanded, we're ready to do glue up of the carcass. I've got my hanging rails, my spanner, my three panels. Then once we get the panels done, we can install the back panel. I'm gonna use the spanners and the hanging rails to kind of lock everything together while that glue dries and sets up. So now we've got it glued up, the dominoes are in. I'm gonna run a couple screws through the side panel into the bottom panel. This is gonna be a sink base, so it's gonna be surrounded by other cabinets, so those screws will be hidden. I'm gonna go ahead and put a counter sink and counter bore bit in to drill these holes. After I've got the sides attached to the bottom, I can focus on putting in the hanging rails and the upper spanner to lock it together before we put the back panel in. Next piece I'm gonna install is this top spanner. Now when I cut this, I cut it the exact same size as the base of my cabinet, this bottom piece. So that way when I put it in the top here, it makes this distance the same as this distance. But it won't hold itself in place, so I'm gonna go ahead and pre-drill the holes first, and then I can run the screws in while I'm holding it in place. So with all those installed, now we're ready to install the back panel. I've got the back panel, I cut it down at a quarter inch Luan uh, using the TS-55 and the guide rail. Now we'll just get it installed. With the carcass all assembled, the last step of the process is to attach the face frame. To do that, we're gonna utilize the domino 
a lot of the same processes as we did when we assembled the carcass and also the face frame itself. Let's get started. So the dry fit's complete, everything fits nicely. I can take it back apart, throw some glue on the dominoes, clamp it up, and then our base cabinet is finished. So with it all in clamps, let that glue set up overnight. Um, after that, you can take the clamps off, look for any spots you may want to touch up sand, any pencil marks left behind, any glue that might be there. Um, from that point, it's a matter of just measuring for your doors and drawers, and, uh, but this cabinet is finished. If you'd like to continue watching this cabinet build, click here or watch this video. And don't forget to subscribe.